Well, another heartbreaking loss for the Leafs. Yeah. Another effort where they try really hard, they even have a few interesting moments, and then they lose. Yeah. And it was to the Flyers. They're not even that good. Brutal. Just some more pain. How are the Marlies? Dude, they were so good. Uh, I wish I went. Showtime. <laughs> Half win. Hey, you get a point when you lose. 5-4 in overtime to the Philadelphia Flyers. And the Ghost Bear! This game, I think, was a good example of just how the next little while is going to go. And a lot of names that are going to be involved in the next little while. Like, for example, Sean Mathias opens the scoring, scores his sixth of the season. Oh, goodness, oh, heavens, the Leafs have taken the lead, some of you might say. Fret not, Tank Nation. Tank Nation, I think you're a little too active right now. I'm not going to lie. And I say this as last year's Tank Commander. Everybody, everybody, huddle up, huddle up. Have you seen the Leafs lineup? They don't need you to actively cheer for them to lose. Furthermore, every positive thing a Leaf with an expiring contract does is awesome. Look, Austin Matthews is very appetizing, but we just need to accept the fact that every single first overall pick belongs to the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, some Oilers fans are thinking right now. Giving a first overall pick to the Edmonton Oilers is like giving a sword to a squirrel. In that I'd be intimidated if I thought you actually knew what to do with it. But a rebuild is much more than that. There's a lot more asset management involved. And every asset that the Leafs ship out will bring in more assets. And let's pretend that Sean Mathias is only worth a fifth rounder. If you can bump that up to a fourth... Wouldn't you take it? And then Sam Gagne scores. He's still in the league, by the way. And Jakob Voracek scores. And then Braden Shen is stopped on a routine say- I'm just kidding, it's squeaked through Bernier. And now it's 3-1, and I'm in a bar watching this game, and Flyers fans around me- Yeah, there were Flyers fans there. They're going nuts! And I didn't want to be a party pooper, but I had to be like, uh, fellas, fellas. It's the Leafs, you gotta grade on a curve. And we shared a laugh, a chuckle over that. And then Nick Spalling, who came to the Leafs in the Kessel trade, was proud to be a Leaf, probably heard that because he was like, I'm finally gonna score! And he pounded on his Leaf crest and brought out his inner penguin and scored on the Philadelphia Flyers. Finally got his first of the season and first as a Leaf. And with the Leafs down 3-2 and James Reimer now holding the fort, that is how we go into the third period. Leafs still need another goal if anything's gonna happen. And on that note, Nazem Kadri reminded the entire hockey world that if you're gonna start a hockey team, maybe don't make your jerseys orange. Just putting on an and one mixtape on Philly. I learned a game from William Wesley, you can never check me. Nazem Kadri, oh, deeks by one defender. Oh, win the neutrals. Oh, another in the defensive zone. And while everyone is hypnotized, gives it to Pistol Pete. Question of the game, Leaf goal of the year? It's gotta be, gotta be. And then just over a minute later, the Leafs take advantage of the Flyers, who were still surprised, still stunned from the cadre setup for Holland, and Byron Frey is Potts his second of the year. Primary assist to Richard Clune, and let me ask you something. What has Richard Clune done for the Leafs besides everything he's been asked to do? I have to admit, when the Leafs signed him, I was somewhat optimistic because, you know, he has a very interesting story, but I was kind of also like, I don't know. He's got 18 penalty minutes on the season, but most of them came in, like, what, his first one or two games? In his last five, he's got one minor. That's it. And two assists. His fitness is off the charts. He's insane in the gym, in excellent shape, and you know what? He's contributing to the team. I understand he's not Sidney Crosby, and most players aren't, but if you're a rebuilding team and the Leafs are, why wouldn't you want a guy like Rich Clune on your side? And and another positive story from that, secondary assist, Brad Boy's 500th NHL point. Oh my goodness, so much happiness! Until Matt Reed scores 32 seconds later. Of course, of course, of course! Why can't the Leafs have anything? And why is it always Matt Reed? I'm not even going to look up the stat because I'm almost positive Matt Reed scores on the Leafs almost every game. And so the game goes to overtime. Alright, you know what? No, no, you know, they were down 3-1. The fact that they are going to overtime 4-4... They should take that. And not to mention, they finally held the mighty Ghost Bear off the scoring sheet. He's got this crazy point streak, and the Leafs of all teams put an end to it. Ha! Oh shoot, that's Voracek! Watch him, watch him pass! Uh, oh, oh, is it... Uh, like, it could have been anybody. You could have had Wayne Simmons score. You could have had freaking Matt Reed score again! Why the ghost bear? Why is it always the ghost bear? And it was pretty somber in the Leafs dressing room despite a pretty awesome effort. Peter Holland was completely beating himself up for missing an assignment in overtime and costing the Leafs the game. I mean, if you want to look at it that way, Pete, I guess you could. You tied the game up for Pete's sake, see what it did. And Jonathan Bernier, uh, 
basically cemented that he's done. He is done. James Reimer has been faltering recently and Babcock is giving Bernier a chance. He's given him a shot to get his starting job back. Every scout in North America is at the Air Canada Centre for this game because it's so close to the trade deadline. It's a Saturday night, they got nothing else going on. It's hockey night in Canada and he gets freaking yanked like halfway into the game. Not even halfway actually, less than a minute into the second. Oh look at that, another rough start to a period! And here's the situation he's faced with. The Leafs either have to trade James Reimer or re-up him. We don't know what's actually going on there. But whether Reimer stays or goes, you think the Leafs are gonna go it with Jonathan Bernier as their starting goalie? Maybe to end this season. Maybe. But I can't imagine a situation where Mike Babcock is going to be cool with that. And it's got to be a nightmare for Bernier too because what, you think he wants to stay in this situation? Probably not. He probably wants a team to trade for him. Who is going to trade for that kind of performance? And after what was a pretty decent effort, the Leafs are hanging their heads low. But you know what, just because the Leafs ended on that note doesn't mean we have to end on that note. You know what happened earlier in the day? Molly Minute, Molly Minute. Only like two dozen people know what the Molly Minute is, Molly Minute. The Toronto Marlies win 3-1 over the Portland Pirates at the Air Canada Center. In front of over 10,000 spectators and in front of the Dangle Navy. A name that freaking stupid Adam and Jesse stuck me with, but whatever, it's kind of cool, it's growing on me. And it was a rough start. The Marlies were probably tired from the game the night before. They played the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, one of the best teams in the American Hockey League. And even though the Marlies are as well, the game was less than 24 hours before. But it's okay because when you're in the American League and you're getting outshot to all hell, you know who's a good goalie to have in your net? Garrett Sparks. And he's not crazily experienced, but he does know a thing or two about stopping a couple pucks at the Air Canada Center. And while he was holding the fort for the most part, Frederick Gauthier puts one on the board, and Brendan Leipzig scores one, and then a beauty! Crazy backhand dangle, and what's more impressive to me is the goalie read it and tracked it perfectly. Leipzig's backhand was just too sick. Ladies, gentlemen, holy smokes, if you can watch the Marlies live, even just once, go and do it. It was so great. Every time the Pirates attacked, there were two defensemen back. I've never seen that before. They don't skate into dumb, fruitless offensive situations. They'll just turn the puck around and start over. It was so good, and it wasn't even a good game by their own standards. Look, as Leaf fans, we are torturing ourselves through this rebuild by only watching the Leafs. How are you not watching the Marlies? You gotta do it. They just hit 40 wins. The Leafs barely have that over the last two years. Not to mention, holy smokes, I could not believe the amount of people who watch the videos, the amount of people who listen to the podcast, Podcast. Watch the podcast now because we have a YouTube channel. I cannot believe how many of you showed up with like signs and ah, uh, that I ah, uh, you're the best. You're the best. You're all the damn best. I really, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say other than I love uh, being a spazzy hockey fan with you. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. When's the trade deadline again?